ever since childhood you've been probably told to drink a lot of milk. Have a glass of milk with every meal and consume all the other dairy products to make your bones stronger. But in the longevity community, dairy is looked upon as something that may age you faster and shorten your lifespan. Well, in this video I'm going to look at whether or not consuming dairy accelerates aging or shortens your lifespan. Do it! So I guess a good place to start with is why do people think that uh, drinking milk can shorten your lifespan and the reason has to do with insulin like growth factor one or igf1 so insulin like growth factor one is a growth pathway inside a body that connects to the mTOR complex and what igf1 essentially does is tell your body to grow and obviously growing is very important when you are a child so that's why they tell you to consume plenty of milk when you are young but uh, excess growth is obviously carcinogenic and excess growth excess igf1 levels actually are associated with uh, different kinds of cancers and shorten mortality or shorten lifespans in different kinds of uh, animal species as well. And this 2001 study did look at the effects of milk consumption on IGF-1 levels and intake of dairy products was associated with a modest increase in circulating IGF-1 levels. But intake of low-fat milk was associated with lower risk of colorectal cancer, particularly among individuals with high IGF-1, IGF-BP3. So at least based on this study, the uh, dairy consumption does increase your IGF-1 levels slightly, but the low-fat milk intake is actually associated with reduced colorectal cancer. But when it comes to overall mortality risk, then there appears to be a U-shaped curve between the association of uh, IGF-1 levels and mortality. So both high and uh, low IGF-1 concentrations are associated with increased mortality in the general population. And uh, the reason has to do with the fact that too low IGF-1 levels may increase the risk of frailty, osteoporosis, sarcopenia, and just you know dying to a hip fracture or something like that. Whereas yeah, high IGF-1 levels, they do, or uh, definitely they make uh, promote development of cancers. And if you already have cancer, then yeah, like high IGF-1 levels will probably make it uh, worse. But when it comes to the, you know what's the optimal amount, then uh, yeah, some, somewhere in the middle, if you have normal IGF-1 levels, then you probably have nothing to worry about in terms of cancer caused by IGF-1. Uh, but if you have like low IGF-1 levels, then yeah, you might be increasing your risk of, let's say, sarcopenia or frailty. But that is also something you have to take with a grain of salt. You know, one of the biggest risk factors of getting frailty and sarcopenia is not exercising. So if you exercise, you have good protein intake and your bone density is generally okay, then I think that lower IGF-1 levels are actually pro-longevity in that scenario. If you have low IGF-1 levels, and you also are frail and you also have sarcopenia and you have low muscle tone then in that scenario yeah like the low IGF-1 levels would probably be quite harmful but if you have too high IGF-1 levels even if you have a lot of muscle so like bodybuilders usually inject even IGF-1 levels so in those cases they are you know I think they are promoting cancer if they have too high IGF-1 levels and they also have you know obviously too much muscle so association with high IGF-1 levels is true in my opinion so you don't want to have obviously excess IGF-1 level you son of a and another problem with the IGF-1 is uh, acne so uh, apparently acne is a lot caused by also the mTOR expression which is connected to IGF-1 so uh, yeah many people who get acne usually have like some form of um, like a dairy allergy uh, and or sensitivity and that's why they develop acne in the first place so another sign if you have acne then that's obviously partly caused by a lot of maybe dairy but can also be some other allergens but let's continue with looking at the association between dairy consumption and risk of overall mortality is there any risk and this 2019 study found that uh, these data from large cohorts do not support an inverse association between high amount of total dairy consumption and risk of mortality. Slightly higher cancer mortality was non-significantly associated with dairy consumption, but warrants further investigation. So yeah, in this study, they did find a slightly increased risk of uh, cancer mortality from the higher uh, dairy consumption, but it was a uh, non-significant. So it's not uh, that powerful of an effect. And there's obviously other things that other factors uh, involved next study 2017 dairy food intake and all-cause cardiovascular disease and cancer mortality we noted 11 percent lower all-cause mortality and 16 percent lower cardiovascular disease mortality risk with high yogurt intake so yogurt uh, consumption was actually associated with yeah 11 percent lower risk of all-cause mortality and 16 percent lower cardiovascular disease mortality which is pretty uh, significant cheese intake was associated with 16 percent lower all-cause mortality and 26 percent lower cardiovascular disease mortality risk so that is very interesting <laughs> it's even uh, powerful more powerful than uh, yogurt 
if I were to speculate why this is so, then cheese obviously has a lot of vitamin K2, which is very important for preventing atherosclerosis and improving heart health. Higher intake of high fat dairy food and milk wasn't associated with all cause or cardiovascular disease mortality. So there was no association there. Neither intake of individual dairy products nor intake of total dairy products was significantly associated with overall cancer mortality. Another 2016 study, Dairy Products Intake and Cancer Mortality Risk, a meta-analysis of 11 population-based cohort studies, which involves almost 800,000 individuals, and they conclude that uh, total dairy products intake have no significant impact on increased all-cancer mortality risk, while low total daily dairy intake even reduced relative risk based on the non-linear model. However, whole milk intake in men contributed to elevated prostate cancer mortality risk significantly. So another study finding that uh, there is some association between dairy consumption and cancer, especially prostate cancer in this study. And uh, the reason has to do with the IGF-1. But we have another Lancet study as well that involved 133,000 people and they found that the dairy consumption was linked to lower rates of cardiovascular disease and mortality. So as a whole, there is some link between dairy consumption and increased risk of cancer, but that link isn't validated by all the studies. And uh, there are some actual other studies showing that there is no association between increased cancer and uh, there is actually some association between uh, dairy consumption with at least yogurt and cheese with a reduced all-cause mortality risk and uh, cardiovascular disease mortality risk. So like the U-curve study showed, both low and high IGF-1 levels are associated with increased mortality. And it might be that if you are consuming yeah, too much dairy or you're also becoming insulin resistant, you're consuming the dairy with a diet like a Western style diet that also raises your IGF-1 levels that has too many refined carbohydrates and added oils and added sugars, then that's going to raise your IGF-1 levels as well. But if you have too low IGF-1 levels, then that can also be somewhat of a risk factor. And in that case, consuming the dairy, you know, pushes you into the, like the normal range with the IGF-1 levels and that pretty much increases your bone density and increases muscle mass which uh, might reduce the mortality risk on that side. Personally what I like to have is to have low IGF-1 levels around 100 or something like that and still consume some dairy and make sure that you also do like the other beneficial activities for bone density and muscle tone like resistance training and a higher protein intake. But let's continue with some of the other benefits of dairy consumption that apparently may also be very pro longevity and uh, yeah dairy consumption is associated generally with uh, lower body weights. The specific reason for that appears to be calcium. So calcium intake is associated with weight loss and fat loss even like central adiposity loss and uh, when you compare calcium foods like spinach and kale with dairy foods, then the dairy foods generally do a bit better in terms of the weight loss. Increasing dietary calcium significantly augmented weight and fat loss secondary to calorie restriction and increased the percentage of fat lost from the trunk region, whereas dairy products exerted a substantially greater effect. And the effect on weight loss is even superior with isocaloric diets. Substitution of calcium-rich foods in isocaloric diets reduced adiposity and improved metabolic profiles in obese African Americans without energy restriction or weight loss, and augmented weight and fat loss secondary to to energy restriction. So obviously you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight, but if you eat the same amount of calories from a high calcium diet or a high dairy diet versus a low calcium diet and a low dairy diet, then the high dairy diet generally will lead to somewhat of a greater weight loss because of the calcium and dairy they can bind to some of the fats and you excrete more fat from the food. So you absorb less calories. So you're still in a calorie deficit, but even if you eat the same amount of calories, the diet or the meal that has more calcium and dairy, that's going to lead to somewhat of a greater calorie deficit. So calcium pretty much binds to uh, fat and you excrete more of it through the feces. Calcium also increases fat oxidation and pretty much promotes fecal fat excretion. So yeah, you absorb less calories from the fat that you eat and you also burn more calories from uh, fat oxidation. 48% body fat. Another reason why dairy consumption may be beneficial for longevity is that uh, it also improves insulin resistance and improves insulin sensitivity. So dairy consumption is associated with reduced risk of diabetes and uh, the reason has to do with the fact that the dairy because it you know is connected to IGF-1 levels it also increases insulin secretion so it makes your body able to pretty much clear the glucose from the bloodstream much more easily so if you consume a food that has dairy then you release slightly more insulin from the insulinogenic effects of dairy 
through the age of one and uh, that also lowers your blood sugar levels and that is uh, shown by many other studies as well consumption of low-fat dairy foods for six months improves insulin resistance without adversely affecting lipids or body weight in healthy adults study results suggest that high dairy consumption four servings a day may improve insulin resistance without negatively impacting body weight or lipid status under free living conditions so that is quite crucial the free living condition part because you know <laughs> you can do many things to people if they were in a, like a laboratory you can control all the calorie intake but in the free living world you know people are going to do what people are going to do like they may roll off they may uh, fall off the wagon with a diet they may just uh, overeat other foods etc so if you can find a diet that enables people to achieve a calorie deficit uh, on like autopilot then that's something much more significant dairy consumption and risk of type 2 diabetes in men during 12 years of follow-up dairy intake was associated with a modestly lower risk of type 2 diabetes each serving per day increase in total dairy intake was associated with a 9 percent lower risk for type 2 diabetes another study a prospective study on dairy intake and the risk of type 2 diabetes in women each serving per day increase in dairy intake was associated with a 4 percent lower risk of uh, type 2 diabetes among these women and dairy can also improve the antioxidant status of your body so uh, pretty much it helps to boost glutathione which is the body's master antioxidant and uh, yeah you do need glutathione for pretty much counteracting aging and uh, during insulin resistance and diabetes your body has glutathione deficiency and uh, it also pretty much causes more you know oxidative stress and damage to your body if you don't have that antioxidant status can i have that milky way so in conclusion there is no direct association between high dairy consumption and increased mortality risk there is some increased risk of uh, cancers uh, especially prostate cancer with high consumption of dairy in some individuals but uh, that association is mostly caused by the higher levels of IGF-1 that the dairy may rise or raise so uh, you know it all depends on the person's IGF-1 levels if you do have high IGF-1 levels as a baseline then our person would be more careful with how much dairy are you consuming but most of the time that re the reason why the IGF-1 levels are high has to do with like the kind of western diet carbohydrates and other meat products as well can raise your ig1 levels so it's not just that the dairy is the cause it's just that if you're eating like a standard western diet then uh, your chances are you're just uh, stimulating ig1 too much with uh, the high consumption of carbohydrates and eating several times all the time on the other hand dairy consumption is associated with reduced body weight more muscle mass generally as well and uh, lower risk of diabetes and insulin resistance so all all in all if your ig1 one levels are normal they're fine then uh, you don't have to really worry about uh, dairy accelerating your aging it's only a problem if your uh, IGF-1 levels are already high or in the borderline high ideally you wouldn't want to have like your IGF-1 levels above 200 I think that's in my opinion that's not the best uh, place to be in terms of longevity for longevity purposes you want to have like your IGF-1 levels between 100 and 200 but not above that if you do want to live longer and slow down aging then i'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock if you're interested then email me the word health to info at and i'll send you the details but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered